Good evening, everyone. Good morning and uh, good afternoon, wherever you are watching us from. You are most welcome on this great service and this first day of this great seminar of uh, anointing for restoration and enlargement. I want us to be on our feet in a short while to give God glory. In the book of Isaiah 35, verse 10, the Bible says, And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I want you to lift up your voice to heaven and thank God for causing it to return. You are returning is not because you are smart. You are returning is because of God that sustains you. Why don't you lift a voice to heaven and give him praise, someone? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We exalt your holy name. We thank you, Daddy. Blessed be your name forever. Lord, all you have done, you have done well. Lord, you are the reason. If it were not, if you are left to men, we won't be where we are. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done in our life. Blessed be your name forever. We worship you, the ancient of day. Mighty King, we give you thanks. We worship you, the I am that I am. And it is in Jesus' great name we have given thanks. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 21. The Bible says, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. I want you to lift up your voice and pray tonight. Father, honor us with your presence tonight. Appear again on this altar. Appear again wherever you are being represented. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Everlasting Father, you deserve glory and adoration. Tonight, the ancient of day, I will pray I am that I am the beginning and the end, Lord. Appear again on this altar. Appear again, O oh Lord, as we worship you in praise and worship. As we do, Lord, whatever you have asked us to do tonight. Lord, as we worship you in truth and spirit, appear again, O oh Lord. As your servant will be ministering the ancient of day, mighty king, we pray for your appearance. Mighty Father, we give you thanks. We worship your holy name. Thank you, mighty God. And it is in Jesus' great name we pray. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 8. The Bible says, I will hiss for them and gather them. For I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. Praise the name of the Lord. There are people that are ordained to be in this service. There are people that are ordained to be watching us live. There are people that are ordained to be streaming in. I want us to go before the Lord and go, save God to bring them forth, to break whatever is a barrier in their life, that they reach here timely and speedily in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and lift your voice. Everlasting Father, you deserve glory and adoration. Lord, there are people that are appearing on this great assembly. We want to worship you, Lord, we pray. Lord, hasten their feet. Hasten their feet, oh Lord. Lord, we pray even those people that may, be, might be in the traffic and they are watching this broadcast. Lord, hasten them, Lord. Lord, remove the barrier. Let there be no blockade in the name of Jesus. Let there not be blockade to the ancient of the mighty the king we give you thanks we worship you jehovah take all the glory take all the praise in jesus great name we pray acts chapter 10 verse 38 the bible say how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good about doing good and helping all that were praise of the devil for god was with him hallelujah the servant of God is prepared, but he cannot function on, on, uh, on his own accord. God must be involved. Hallelujah. I want us to go before the Lord and pray, Father, may you anoint your servant afresh and grace his tongue, O oh Lord. Go ahead and pray. Everlasting Father, this is your chosen vessel tonight. Lord, I will pray the ancient of day. Anoint your servant afresh. Anoint your servant afresh. Lord, pour a fresh oil, O oh Lord. Pray, pour a fresh oil, great I am. Pour a fresh oil, the ancient of day. Mighty King, in the name of Jesus, Lord, anoint the tongue of your servant. Use him mightly, O oh Lord. 
mighty king king we praise you we worship you thank you mighty god and it is in jesus great name we pray i say in the name of jesus we pray first chronicle chapter 4 verse 9 to 10 the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren and his mother called him's name jabez saying because i bear him with sorrow and jabez called on the god of israel saying Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and thou wouldest keep me from evil, and it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he has requested. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want you to lift up your voice to the throne of grace and pray, Lord, let the theme of this seminar have an expression in the life of the people that are participating on it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, how we pray the ancient of them. Lord, the theme of anointing for restoration and enlargement may it be rub on the people. May it rub in your people, Lord. The people that are watching, wherever they are watching, oh Lord, let them be enlarged. Let them be restored. By today, ministration and tomorrow, great I am. Whatever has died, whatever has gotten lost, oh Lord, Lord, bring it back, oh Lord. Father, we give you praise and honor. Thank you, mighty God. And it is in Jesus' great name we have prayed. The Lord has heard us. Let's go before him and give him praise. He's a good God. Father, we give you thanks. We worship you. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given them. Let us continue worshiping the name of the Lord. He is great and greatly to be praised. He deserves all the glory and honor. Come on, just lift your voice and worship the King of Kings. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being a wonderful God. We glorify you, Jesus. We raise our voice to worship you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We magnify you. What have you not done? For me, 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 say, what have you not done?
hands. Amen. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Oh, yes. He is worthy of all our praise. You are going Amen. to celebrate him. Give a mighty shout to the Lord.
There is no one like you. Hallelujah. Let's just lift up our hands. Bless you, Jesus. As we exalt his name. Father, we bless you, Jesus. We glorify your name. You are worthy of our praise. Give him glory. He deserves all our praise. Father, we thank you. You are worthy. We magnify your name, Jesus. Thank you for inhabiting our praises and worship. Receive all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped him. Amen. Awesome God, we thank you this hour. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for the privilege of being in this place again. Thank you, Father, for your presence that is already here. And thank you for the lives that you've ordained to restore this weekend. Let your word, oh God, find practical expressions in our lives. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This, this can only be God. What a joy to be here. What a joy. of days it is indeed a thing of gratitude to God for this is a real privilege we have returned to give glory to God because he's been awesome I want to let someone know that this seminar is for you you know why I know it is for you this is the very first seminar after the lockdown praise the Lord so God is mindful of somebody in this seminar it is my prayer that someone, whether you're watching online or you are here, that you'll be able to connect yourself to receive your own. Amen. So we are glad having you in Nairobi. Amen. Amen. And I'm also happy that I'm in Nairobi. Please, you can have your seats. God has been awesome. I want us as a way of welcoming us to this uh, meeting tonight to open our Bibles to the book of Nehemiah chapter 5. The theme of the seminar is anointing for restoration and enlargement. God's servant speaking in Mombasa on Thursday, he said, after every distress comes enlargement. Praise the Lord. I read Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 1, then I jump to the other verses. He said, and there was a great cry of the people, of their wives, against their brethren, the Jew. When you see an adult cry, it's an indication the fellow has been overwhelmed with issues that he or she can no longer handle. The Bible says there was not just a cry but a great cry when God hears a great cry he never turns his ears away every great cry attracts the attention of God one of the things that caused the great cry is that their possessions were taken away from them their land were taken from them their children were taken away from them and the children were now becoming slaves. And for that reason, there was a great cry. Food was taken away from them. Shelter was taken away from them. I have no idea what might have been taken away from you for the past six months that have caused a great cry. And I tell you that are some, when you hear great cry, this is not a cry that you see tears physically. Great cry is that kind of cry that you are still smiling, but deep down you are crying. That was the case of these people. Let me jump to verse 11. Because of the great cry, he said, restore. Remember I said the great cry was as a result of things that were taken away from them. He said, restore, I pray you to them. Even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, 
and their houses and also hundred part of the money and of the corn, the wine and, and the oil that ye exact from them. Then said they, we will restore them and will require nothing of them. So we will do as thou hast said. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. Hallelujah. He said all that was taken must be restored. I don't know what was taken from you unlawfully. But I want to let you know that God of restoration is with us in this meeting. He said, and they said, we will restore to them and we will require nothing. We will do as thou hast said. We have the man of God, the Moses of this house, the apostle of this commission. God has sent him to us in this special seminar with a word. He just needs to say something and God will enact that restoration. He said, as thou hast said, we will restore and we will take nothing from them. We'll be rising up to pray. What is it that has caused you a great cry? You'll be telling the Lord, two days is more than enough. If you go back home, read the whole of this account and you see everything that was taken from them was restored. Have you cried a great cry? Rise to your feet and talk to God. God of restoration. Whatever caused that great cry, tell the Lord, Father, I am here in this meeting, this meeting, this seminar of restoration. Restore to me, O oh God, via your word and through your servant. Restore my vineyard. Restore my land. Restore my oil. Restore my corn. Whatever is your own that was taken, that caused a great cry. Tell the Lord to restore. When restoration happens, enlargement becomes the order of the day. Father, restore. Could it be your worship, your fellowship with God that might have been interrupted? Cry unto the Lord for restoration. Lord God of restoration, restore our olive yards to us, O God. Our houses, our vineyards, O Lord. They say hundred parts of the money, money that was lost, resources that was lost, oil that was lost, wine that was lost. Father, whatever was lost that caused a great cry in the lives of your people. These two days, let there be a restoration. Father, let there be a sudden restoration. Talk to God. We serve a God of sudden restoration. Tell him to restore to you. Whatever it was, so God, that caused a great cry in the lives of your people, that caused a great cry in our lives, let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. After these two days, Father, let me leave this place with my testimony of restoration. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Verse 12 said, Then they said, We will restore to them. We will require nothing of them. So we will have, so, so will we do as thou hast said. We'll be going ahead to say that, Lord, as your servant mount this podium, every declaration made, he said, We will do as thou hast said. Whatever took your possession has ear, it can hear. That, Lord, as your servant speaks tonight, whatever belongs to me, let it be released. Without further delay, let it be released. Take advantage of this atmosphere and begin to talk to God. Whatever declaration that will be made by your servant today, let my portion be released. Let my portion be released. At the instance of your word, whatever was taken from me, wherever it is, at the instance of your word, Lord, let it be released. Father, let it be restored back to me. Let it be restored back to me. Lord, they will do as they hear. Father, as your servant mount this podium, whatever declaration is made, Father, it will be to my favor. It will lead to my restoration. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. Lift your voice and appreciate him. Lord, thank you. God is coming through for us with a spiritual handkerchief to wipe the tears of our great cry. Oh, hallelujah. Kasi yata. Branduzi kande yeke tabusha. Lekata yeke. You are living here with your shouts of joy and celebration. 
What you least expected that will be returned to you. God of restoration will place it in your hands. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. With Jesus' joy. Believing that your great cry is coming to an end. Put your hands together for the Lord as we receive God's servant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our God is a good God. Amen. To him be all the glory. Amen. We are glad to see each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. I was telling Mama that this service should have been called a Passover. Amen. Or a crossover service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That you cross over. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Please take your seat and God bless you. Amen. I can see all of you have added weights. Uh, you have refused to rest until Corona came to make sure you rested. Praise God. Hallelujah. I said praise God. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Amen. I'd like to thank each and every one of you who is able to make it here today. We look forward that more people will join us tomorrow. Amen. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For those of you connecting with us from different parts of the world, I welcome you to this wonderful broadcast. Amen. I believe that the hand of God will rest mightily on you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One thing that is sure, if you can't see my picture very well wherever you are, you will definitely see or hear my voice. And one of it is more than enough. Praise God. That's why God did not just give you a seeing eyes. He gave you a hearing ear. And I tell you, both of them carry equal weights. Both of them does what? Carry equal weights. He said, be it unto you according to your faith. How does faith come? It comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. The Bible speaking, it said, the light of of the eyes rejoices the hearts. Amen. Amen. So whether you are present physically or you are hearing me by audio or you are able to see from the uh, breakthrough page, whichever way, what is important is that you must come in contact with knowledge. When you come in contact with knowledge, you come in contact with freedom. Yes. I see the freedom of God coming upon you mightily. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I said praise God. Hallelujah. I'd like to thank every one of you online. I've seen Pastor Daniel in Nigeria. I've seen uh, Lucy. I wonder what you are watching me for from your house. Yes. Lucy Achin, God bless you. I've seen Mika Kenyajui. Lucy, you should be here tomorrow. I've seen Gladys watching from Embu. Praise God. Hallelujah. I've seen favor and several joys and several other people are online. The Lord bless you and prosper you. Amen. And of course, those of you who are here practically, we like to thank God for your life Amen. and for what God is doing. Brother Dilly, thank you for coming. God bless you. The Lord God of heaven will reward you abundantly. Praise God. I like you the way you question me. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You see, if nobody asks you a question, it means there is nothing you are doing. <laughs> if nobody, you know when they question some of you, you get angry. When nobody is questioning you, it means there is nothing that you are doing that worth questioning. 
So I like the way many have questioned, how can it be enlarge, uh, restoration and enlargement? How? In the midst of distress? Yes. Yes. You see, when you are not sent on an errand, there is no how you can have the substance of the message. When you are not sent on an error, you can't have what? The substance of the message. You will just be pointing and say, oh, Isaac has been sent to you. You know, you know that um, Dickness Emily has a message. And you have seen Dickness Emily, but he has a message with Isaac. No matter how you love Emily, you will only be telling him, I, Isaac, have what? Your message. Because you are not the one that was sent. The man that was sent have the substance of the message. Praise God. I said praise God. Now, I have come to join the Holy Ghost to enable you. Amen. When you hear anointing, it's not oil. No. Anointing can be defined as divine enablement. Something that enables you. And among many things that enable believer is the word of God. Is what? The word of God. And you know the word of God is self-anointed. The word of God is self-what? Self-anointed. He said the word that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. So an encounter with the word of God is an encounter with the Holy Ghost, with the Spirit of God. And you know what the Spirit of God does? When he come upon a man, he enables the man to do what he cannot naturally do. That's why concerning Jesus, when he got into the temple and read the scripture, you know what he said? Look at it this way. In Luke chapter 4, what was delivered to him was a Bible. The Bible said it was delivered unto him, the book of what? Prophet Isaiah. They didn't say it was delivered to him oil. What was delivered to him? A book. What did Jesus say? The Bible said, and when he had found where it was written. When he found where it was written. Not, not when oil was poor. When he found what was written. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me because the word of God is anointed. The word of God carries spirit. Your word carries your spirit. When you speak, if you are a liar, the word become a lie. <laughs> your word carry your spirit. When you are uncontrollable kana, listen to that, uncontrollable what? Kana. Your jest will be kana. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you listen to a comedian, you can tell his nature. Do you understand what I'm saying? When a comedian is an adulterous person, all his comedy will be adulterous. When you are a liar, your good money will be a lie. Have you not had people who said, <laughs> who, who is standing beside you and picking a call? A word is not a lie. It is the person who speaks that determines what the word means. We have not had people, you are standing, and he said, oh yes, 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 I'm in Nairobi, and it's in Embu. You see, Nairobi is not a lie. But the one using Nairobi by spirit is a liar. So Nairobi at that hour becomes a lie because it's in Embo. Did you understand? Did you understand? So the word of God is self-anointed. I want you to understand it very well. Because when they say a, a service is anointing, everybody begins to imagine the use of oil. 
And so they are waiting for when the oil come. Meanwhile, the anointing has begun from when the opening prayer started. That's why I'm showing you what we are here to do so that you put your faith online, not when we are putting the oil. The oil is a seal. So get ready for an encounter with the word of the Lord. Amen. Can I hear you louder? Amen? amen. Can I hear you louder? Amen? amen. You see, Joseph was in prison for a long time. And when you are in prison, your destiny is also in prison. Everything that has to do is in prison. But Joseph was supposed to be a leader, a rainy king. But you know what they say it came to him? It was not oil that came to him. No. The Bible says, when the word of Joseph came, when his word came, you see that? When his word came, the same king who have heard him in incarceration, the Bible said the same king sent for him. Why was it that the king is sending for him? His word has come. What was in his word? Inside his word is an anointing. Do you understand to that level? Inside his word is what? Is anointing. And there is one thing that happened to the anointing. We said when the word, the word of God comes and we say anointing has come, that means the spirit of God has come. And when the spirit of God comes on you, you are bound to walk in liberty. For wherever the spirit of God is, there is liberty. So the king had to send for him. Praise God. I said praise God. So settle down properly to understand why we are here. Amen. Settle down properly to understand why we are here. Because the anointing begins with the entrance of the word of God, which is a carrier of the Holy Spirit. When the word enters you the same way it entered Jesus, the anointing has come. And like I said, anointing is what? A divine enabler. A divine enabler. Something that gives you a supernatural ability to do what your natural energy cannot do. Hallelujah. Amen. So from the beginning, every word that you hear carry anointing. Therefore, you must endeavor to assimilate every one of them. And at the end of the day, by the time we are anointing you, you are super drunk. Praise God. I said praise God. Now, let's get into why are we coming for anointing for restorations and enlargement? Why? Why are we here for that? We are here for that because one of the greatest woe, W-O-E, of a man one of the worst things that can happen to you in life is not to know your time and season. Not to know what? Your time and season. That's number one. Another word that can happen to you is not to know the time and season you were born. The time and season that is in your generation. Not to know the phase of life that you are in. And the next word that can happen to a man is to know and not know the management of the time and season that you are. You know it, but you don't know how to manage it. Those are terrible words. These are more deadly than cancer. Now, can you imagine what will make Jesus to cry? The almighty God cry. Whatever will make Jesus cry must be a very serious thing.
And one of the things that made Jesus to wept was that the th that he was visiting some group of people and he looked at them and looked at them and began to weep. And when he wept, you know what he said? He said he was weeping because the people didn't understand their time, their season. They didn't understand their season. They didn't understand their season. And that made Jesus to weep. You know why Jesus was weeping? As powerful as he is, it is natural. You begin to weep when you consider yourself helpless. When you consider yourself what? Helpless. That's when people weep. I'm sure some of you, you went to school. You know when they put the paper in your front, examinations? No matter the foundation on your face. When you read question number one and you don't know it, question number two, you don't know it, question number three, you don't know it, question number four, you don't know it, question number five, you have an idea, question number six, and they say answer three. <laughs> that hour, your foundation is useless. <laughs> Tears will naturally come without prayer. There is something like, oh Lord, let me cry. Mm -mm. The tab will be open. No matter how beautiful you are. Jesus looked at the people. They were in gross ignorance of their time and season. And he began to weep. The light has a dog. It's not this, what do they call this? The, the Kiswahili have a very funny name for him. Chihuahua, yes. He has a dog. A, a Chihuahua kind of a dog. And uh, she loved the dog so much. Mm -hmm. The very first day the dog came, he slept in her room. <laughs> so I was just laughing. I was rough at the beginning, but eventually I calmed down. I said, this girl will learn a lesson by herself. So as this dog began to grow, she's very loving. Even me, I fall in love with the dog. Everybody loved the dog. But because of the so much love, she also want to express itself. So he bark. <laughs> and you say, he will bark. It's not harming you. He just want to express that I'm reciprocating the kind of love I find here. <laughs> but he doesn't know that we are not living alone. <laughs> there are other people in the apartment. So his joy make him to be evicted from the house. And then we have to take him back to, to, to church compound there. But up to now, when he knows the sound of my car, he knows my voice, he can even tell you, you know where to wait for me. But to see, this dog can't fathom me that why am I outside the house? Why am I no longer where I see many people? Why am I alone? He will cry when he see anybody from the house come to church premises and they visit him in his cage. He will cry. So I, I kept on looking at this dog. I said, Lord, if this is how I am, have mercy on me. And this is how many people are. The things they are crying about, they are sincere. But you see, you don't succeed by crying. You succeed by secrets. So this dog is crying, but all this dog needs to know is that they don't want him to shout. Then you will be inside the house. But he doesn't know, and we don't know how to communicate it to him, that <laughs> the only trouble you have is your noise. You see, we love the dog. The dog loves us. But there is one thing that put him outside the love. And that is his shout. Let me tell you something. 
80% of the problem of your life is the misunderstanding of your time and season. Miss what? Understanding or mismanagement or ignorance of your time and season. So, I, I tell you, like yesterday when I was leaving office, Ma, when I got to mama asked me, did you see, we call it cocoa, did you see cocoa? I said, I can't stand it. I know if I go there in the next one hour, they will be crying. I want to visit, but I can't visit because I know it will turn out to punishment. When you don't know your time and season, or you know it and you don't know how to manage it, you will weep all your life. You will weep what? All your life. You'll be crying. You'll be crying. That's why Jesus saw how grievous it is when a man or a group of people doesn't have understanding of their time and season. And Jesus began to weep. He wept on their behalf. You know why he was weeping? Don't forget. People weep when it seems that you are what? You are helpless. When it looks like there is no remedy. Jesus look at them like I look at that dog. Now there is no remedy. I can't help you. Because the only thing, don't shout. If you don't shout, no neighbor will know you are in our house. We will protect you. But you must shout. You see that? Praise God. I said praise God. There are things you call problem. They are not problem. The reason why it is problem to you is because you don't know your time and your season. You don't know your time and your season. I give you an example of parents. I don't know where you are standing, but for me, whether Corona exists or it doesn't exist, but let's assume it exists, it was a blessing. It depends on where you are standing. You see, if I tell people to draw this altar from where you are, Emily must not tell us there is flower in his drawing. Am I right? If I, all of you pick your paper, draw this segment of the altar. Emily must not have, sorry, uh, Annette must not have flower in her drawing. Right? Am I right? Uh, Emily must not have, sorry, Annette must not have flower because where Annette is seated, he can't see the flower. I don't know where you are standing, but where I'm standing, Corona was a blessing. I'm telling you. But where you are seated, Corona might be your enemy. But as for me, where I am seated is a blessing because it has come like a fire that came to try every one of us. What kind of foundation do we have in Christianity? That's what he has done. It has come to Bring value to something that you thought they were valueless. Your 55,000 that used to eat pizza every weekend, he has come to remind you, you don't buy pizza because you have money. Because there are days that there are no rain. Every day is not a raining day. Praise God. I said praise God. It has come to put value to the teachers. To let us know how valuable the teachers are and how irresponsible we have become as parents. The teacher gave back our children to us. Over 30,000 are pregnant. Is that not up to that? It's over 30,000, yes. It's because some county, 4,000, all manner. You don't have the list. Anyway, you are Mushamba, anyway. But since I'm a leader, I read everything. Over 30,000 children are pregnant now as we speak. Just because, you see, we, we always say, who are the teachers? What do they mean? 
We are the parent. We pay the school fees. But it has clearly shown that it is children who have been giving back to children in the last 20 years. Irresponsible parents who have raised dogs and think that they have raised children. That's what it has shown. That is what it has shown. Why, how does those children, for example, I'm giving you illustration to let you know that you have a duty to go to learn how to read time and season. Time and season. You have no destiny until you understand the mystery of time and season. You have no destiny. Whatever you have saw or whatever, whatever you have seen, whatever you have discovered that you call destiny, it is a mere dream until you understand the mystery of what? Of time and season. We're coming together uh, in the morning in a flight. As soon as we got down, as soon as, as, soon as we are landing, I told mama, because I'm always thinking. I, told, I was from a thought, and I said, wow. How would you have been if Rehan Bonke has not made use of his time? Can you do crusade, the kind of crusade he does now? No way. In fact, I almost conclude, maybe that's why God allowed him to go. Because this year, he will have done nothing. Because, they, you know, how do you say to, uh, people to social distance and you have one million? How would they social distance? It's not possible. The people selling masks, we build story building. So, it, thank God, he made wise use of his season. He made wise use of his season. So when Jesus saw these people, he said to them, Oh, I am weeping because you do not know your hour of visitation. Your hour of your visitation is your hour of, is your season. Your hour of your visitation is your hour or is your season, is your time. When you miss your timing at the airport, you become what? You become a foreigner in the airport. The security man will ask you, what are, excuse me, where are you going? Because there is no more flight. When you miss your time and season, you become a suspect. <laughs> that you are going and the plane has left. And they have checked in everybody and uh, they've closed the counter. You know, when you are standing, people begin to ask you questions, especially the security men, because you look like a suspect. When you miss your timing, you look like you have expired. When you miss your timing, you see what you shouldn't have seen. When you miss your timing, your life begins to insult you. You can imagine Isaac now going to primary school. Even the table, the table were not made to acquire. <laughs> you know how they make our table in those days? They attach the chair with, uh, with the table, with the desk. So where would this stomach be? So that means we'll be sitting <laughs> in a style. <laughs> when they say stand up, he's still sitting. When you miss your season, you become a stranger to life. A stranger, a total stranger to life. When you miss your season, you are humiliated. Life, life begins to humiliate you. Like many, many, many were humiliated during the coronavirus. A majority is because we miss our season. Honestly, we miss our season. All right, let's read scripture. So, 
Somebody said to me, he love when I don't open Bible. That that means the service will close on time. Yeah, but when I open Bible, <laughs> so, and I cannot promise her that I will not open Bible. Now, verse 14 of chapter 19 of Luke Gospel. Luke chapter 19 and verse 40. He said, and he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if they should hold their peace, the stone will immediately cry out. That means it was the season of the people. But he said, if they will not rise to the occasion, stone will take their season. Did you understand that? I tell you this, that if these should hold their peace, that is, they are not supposed to hold their peace, but if they did, stone, we do what? We cry out immediately. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. He beheld the city and wept over it. And when he was come near, the, when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes. For this day shall come upon thee that thy enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in, in what? In on every side. Just like Corona did. He dragged a trench surrounding everyone. Everyone. Every system. Every nation. And people could not move. And they call it what? Lockdown. We must not allow spiritual lockdown to set in. Amen. Let us stop at physical what? Lockdown. And you know what to make us to allow? Spiritual lockdown is the same reason why we allow physical lockdown. We didn't know our season. You know why, the reason why the lockdown was the government of Africa especially, let me talk about our continent, they have no answer to the question of COVID-19. They have what? No answer. When our president have ear pain, ear, ear, this one, that my grandmother will take broom and clean and move on. When our president have ear problem, he went to UK. African leader had no answer. You know, let me tell you something. That's why sometimes I believe maybe there was something called COVID. Sometimes I don't believe. Because all disease symptoms were not new. There were symptoms we knew long time ago. 
That's what they were using to convince us. It was not a new symptom. People have been sneezing. My mother, my mother, have, there will be a day, I said, since morning I've been sneezing. And he will carry his basket and go to his market. He doesn't need the ventilator. If you don't listen to me, I want you to listen very well. It, because one of the reasons why we were so scared and our, the government of nation, they don't know what to do and lock the border is that also we are as confused as they are. You see Tanzania? Did they lock down? Have they all died? If you don't have heart problem, a breathing problem, how will you die? If you can breathe well, you can't die. So people have been dying by having what? Bre breathing problem. You don't get lost. Grammar. You see all those grammar they spoke, all those grammar, we have seen the end of it. It was corruption. And don't blame Kenya. Kenya are not alone. Billions and billions were taken in Nigeria. So it was a season to steal. When they were to plan election in Nigeria, the, the, the minister said it is impossible in three weeks or in one month to distribute 280,000 uh, voting card that is not possible at all. No, no statistic can be applied. But when they were sharing billions, it takes two days. <laughs> Which one's supposed to be harder? Money. Because money is a voice. So what I'm trying to get you to, so that you don't get to yourself whereby you allow spiritual lockdown, because that one will be worse. And that's why we are going now. That's the handwriting that is on the wall now. Do you know people have not returned to church? And do you know it's not only Kenya? It's all over the world. They are not scared. People say they are afraid of COVID. It's a lie. No. Faith is gone. It's not COVID. Mama was with me last, you see, last two weeks. There was a member who was not in church, but I found him in the mall. <laughs> I found him where they are eating pizza. And I found with a small baby. And I confronted her. I said, now you say it's COVID. I didn't have to come to church. Mall and church, which one have history of healing? It's upon Mount Zion. In fact, before I finish, he finished it. <laughs> now, what is happening to her? We are going to the next phase. And that will be worse. That will deal with Christian. That's why I've come to see you. That wake up. When you go to an airport, it's like a ghost city. I was say, I think last week or two, I was in Nairobi. It was like a ghost city. Today it was still a ghost city. But go to this road. Just this road is fuller than how it used to be. Unbelievers are out. But you know you are believing by faith. It's faith that makes you to come out. You. But now your faith is gone. Their ambition is what made them to come out. So their ambition is back. In fact, they chased COVID. <laughs> I was in Malindi one and a half week, uh, almost two weeks ago or so. I was in Malindi. Nobody is wearing masks. I had to remove mine. <laughs> because I look so strange. Everybody have gone back to normal, but only the church. And it's not only BCI. You see, if it is only BCI, you can blame your pastor. They, are, they don't have revelation. Or they, don't, they, they have not seen God before. But you see, and it's not only Kenya. If it's only Kenya, we can say, oh, Christians in Kenya are very weak. Nigeria, I saw them. People are not back to church. You know what has happened? In three, sorry, in a period of six months, Satan have drained their generator, which is faith. You know, Jesus said, if I come back, will I still find faith? 
So faith can depart. If faith can't travel, Jesus will say, will I find it? Because it was already there. I don't want you to get into spiritual lockdown. You see, global lockdown, nation lockdown is okay because you are dealing with the community. But when it's come to individual faith lockdown, it's more deadly. It will be worse. Some of us never locked down anywhere. You see me on, you see, you see me on, uh, on uh, social media, on Facebook every day. Even when I was strong, that I almost not be able to walk, I asked for my drive. And she would drive. She drove me to church. And when I look at my office and my car, I will walk in. And I will preach. I remember one of the days I was coughing. And Karanga Road. <laughs> he prayed for my cough. But you see, I knew it was my season. Whatever is not tried cannot be relied on. Mm. Cannot be relied on. Don't allow spiritual lockdown to catch up with you because it's more deadly. <laughs> Let me say this to you. You cannot do what the worldly people are doing. You've left it long ago. It is, it is dangerous to go to war with a weapon that you don't know how to use. You should have stayed at home so that people can see your dead body. We can't behave like unbelievers. They are back. Are you not seeing them on the street? They don't even wear masks. If you see them putting masks, it's because of their scary, so that they are not embarrassed. They are, so, <laughs> they are so deadly committed. The people that are affected now are the church, are the brethren, because Satan educates you for six months. All I'm telling you now, I'm not telling you right now. It's not now I'm hearing it. Ask that woman then. When people were praying, oh Lord, let the church be open. I told mama, I said one thing is for the government to open the church. Another thing for us to see how brethren, not bad brethren, brethren, and not what? Bad brethren. She said, she can tell you. I said, because anything you do for 48 days is likely to be your new attitude. So people are used to waking up in the morning on Sunday and not go to church. And that's why you see they are not going. People are used to stay at home. That's why, especially the Christians, they are not opening their shops. Some want Corona to continue. Understand the time and the season. When you don't understand the time and the season in which you are, hey, listen to me, you become a slave of that generation. You become what? A slave of that generation. Nothing makes you to be in command of your life like understanding of your time and season. Nothing. Nothing. Look, <laughs> If you understand that now you should be laughing, you will live long. You will do what? You will live long. <laughs> Somebody said, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. Listen, one thing I've learned over the years is that I can only choose my action. I can't choose the action of others. I can only choose how I will treat you, but I don't know how you will treat me. It is your right to determine how you treat me, the name you call me. So I have educated myself on what I call self-preserved. You know, when you want to preserve juice, you put some something inside there. Eh? Is that not true? 
when you want to preserve beans, you grind pepper, you know pepper, you grind it and put it in the in gunia. No insect will touch it. You understand what I'm saying? When you want to preserve your food, you put it inside freezer. You must have freezer of life that you carry around. That I don't, you see this one, you see the way you do her hair. Now, I can't choose a style for her. So if I don't like hair like this, I have to develop self-preservation of my eyes not to see the hair and read the meaning. <laughs> you better start preserving yourself. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You hear what Bill Gates said? He said Africa will be full of dead body. Did you see dead body? No, we preserve ourselves. We can't stop him from saying something. He's an a global icon. He has to speak. Even if he doesn't have a word, they will ask him. But I refuse to die on the street. Praise God. Why all this story? Why am I taking you around now? Many Christians think that this season is against them. That's what I've come to tell you. It's not against you. Can I hear you? You see the amen is so scattered. Amen. One leg is in the north. One leg. Can I hear a better amen? amen? This hour is not against the believer. Amen. This is our hour. This amen. is. You know why Jesus was weeping? The people thought the season was against them. But it was actually their hour of visitation. Amen. God will never have meaning in your life. Listen to this. If Satan have not stolen anything from you. You didn't hear what Jesus said? Jesus meant to say, I, my coming will have no meaning in your life except you have problem. You see, I have not come for the righteous but for the lordship. So, the, the coming of Jesus is the season for everyone that is lost. The hard time that we are, the distress of this hour, is not against the church. It is for the church. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. In Mombasa, during this COVID-19, I see people passing our church and they will knock the gate. And tell Askari, we are looking for Pastor Wally. Or they will just tell him, we don't have food. We need food. And the Askari will call Afolabi. And I'll tell them, give them food. We don't know them. So what has COVID done? COVID has come to reveal the house of God is a house of refuge. Amen. And there are sick people who understand it well. Don't mind those who come to sing in choir and they, they, because the choir man say you are late and he carries his bag and went away. Leave those one alone. But now there are people who recognize and acknowledge that the house of God is a city of refuge. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. So for today, I have come to tell you this season is not against you. It is for your making. Amen. This season is for us. This is our time. You know what I'm emphasizing it? Everything that happened in your life take its bearing from your perspective. One day I asked a policeman, how come a dog is able to catch a thief? And he told me, no. When you steal or you stole anything, your system produces certain enzymes that signify fear. And that is what the dog is looking for. So when he get that smell, he grab your trouser and then you confirm. You know, you won't be surprised because you know why he grabbed. So when you confirm, then he held you down. He was, it was, he was sampling you, whether you are the one, but you confirm it. Praise God. What does this thing mean? Now, I am here to educate you in two days. That don't secret some exam that will make you a victim of the season we are. This time is our time. It is not the time of the Gentile. 
The Gentile has no hope. We are the one who has hope. Come on, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. The Gentile has no hope. They have no hope. But we have hope. And the Bible says, he that is joined to the living, there is hope. Praise God. I said, praise God. So Jesus wept because the people have no understanding of the timing. And that's why I'm here to make each and every one of you to understand that this is our time. This is our time. Let this resonate with your spirit, man, every day. Yeah. This is my time. This is my time. Well, let me close by showing you what are the po spiritual pointers that this is our time. There has never been the history of any one of us within our age bracket that man has cried like now. Karanga, have you seen people glo globally crying the way they are crying now? I've never seen. I've never seen. I've never seen at any time when the world were distressed like this. I've never. I've never seen a time, at any time since I was born, when the world, when everywhere looked like a cast down. I've never seen. I was in Malindi, I tell you, it's like a, a ghost city. Even small, small Empesha shops are closed. Everywhere look deadly. For those of us who knew how Italian would be on the road, everywhere is bubbling in the night, everywhere is quiet. So what does the Bible say when everywhere is cast down? There is what? So if you see the other one, Happen. Don't you know it is your turn for your own? Yes. How many of you do see saw when you are in school? See saw, eh? You remember see saw? Some of these guys, they didn't do it. They put them down and they were giving them baby. That's why they have no scars. <laughs> eh? You know, when you press here, where does your neighbor go? He go up. And that's, that's, that's what the Bible says. So when you see the wall is down, you should know it is your turn to be up. Every time I see accident, if there are two or one, I say I'm still far from having one. Because the Bible says, you will see a thousand on one side and ten thousand on the other. How many thousand are? Eleven. And after you see eleven thousand, you say, yet it is not your turn. After that, I say, and it shall not come nigh thee. Somebody say, what is, what is uh, important here? No. If you catch this in the spirit, you begin to excrete certain spiritual enzyme that keep the spirit that cause accident away. Because, you know, even if you do one, you will still not believe him. They call you barren. Why are you crying? And somebody delivering around your neighborhood. Is that you see this simple gospel hasn't entered you? This what? Simple gospel has, has not entered you. If it can happen to that woman, you look like the woman. It will soon happen to you. That means you are so many on the queue, but God is, the queue is moving. Come on, say I hear. Come on, say I hear. Yesterday, a woman in our compound, I met Mama and shared her testimony and told Mama, please be praying along with me. If you say, if you say I cause, cause uh, corona, that woman will say, no, leave corona alone. <laughs> you know why? She has been waiting for her baby for how long? Over 10 years, they have been married, believing a very young woman. It happened during this corona. <laughs> it happened what? during this corona. The pregnancy is how many months now? About four. Ma, ma, mama Deboye was sharing, uh, Mama uh, Margaret Dowser was sharing the testimony of a woman who had been waiting for a child for 22 years. 20 what? 22 years. She gave birth. Amen. You will give birth. Amen. Your home may not be physical children. 
But whatever we represent, baby, to you, God will give it to you. But you have to know the season, this season is for you. You know what they said? They said, I will walk a walk in your days. So until you know your days, God cannot walk. I will walk a walk in your day. So you must know your day in order to engage the hand of God to walk a walk. I will walk a walk in your day that even if you are told, you will not believe it. This is our season. We have seen cast down. And that cast down, I want to prove it to you. Turn your Bible there. I don't want to assume you are still reading the Bible. Now, turn your Bible there to Job chapter 22 and verse 29. Job 22 and verse 29. Wear mask, no problem. Wear it to protect those who don't believe in it. Somebody say, well, Pastor, where is your own? It's in my pocket. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sanitize your hand. There is nothing wrong. After all, many of you before, you were not washing your hand before you eat mandans. So wash your hand and sanitize it. It's, it's hygienic. It's a culture. That's why you see many of you now, your hand are peeling. All manner of chemical have rubbed the hand. It is okay. But the most important thing is what I'm saying. Sanitize your heart also. You've been washing hand. Sanitize your heart also. That this season is not against me. It's not what? Against me. Why is it not against you? Listen to this. You are in what? Job 22 verse 29. Let's see that together everybody. Underline the word man. Because pastor, somebody will say, pastor is talking to everybody. But I will soon prove to you that you are not among them. He said, when men, everybody say men. men. Come on, say it very well. Men. Say it as if you are a goat. Men. men. <laughs> we have done it as if we are good. Men. He said, he said, when men, and we have enough men crying today. Not one, we have a no. So these are the fulfillment of the scripture there. He said, when men are saying, there is a cast down. What did he say? Eh? No, 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 no. What did he say? Who he say? Uh -uh. Men are cast down. And you are a man on the earth, but you'll be saying something. That means you are not a man. You are not among the men. He said, when men are saying there is a cast down, you will be saying there is a lifting. In the same country? Yes. What will make you to say what they are not saying? You must know this is your season and it is not their season. So I'm not going to say confederacy to what they say confederacy to. Let me take you to Psalm 82. Psalm 82. And I think from verse 5. Are we there? Psalm 82 and verse 5. We can read down to, is this 82? Verse, verse what we'll begin from? From verse 5. Let's read that together, everybody. They know not. They know not. Neither will they understand. You see, they follow everybody. They walk on in darkness. They walk on and in darkness. Uh-huh. All the foundation of the hour are out of course. Uh -huh. I have said, I have said are you are not men. I have said ye are God. Uh -huh. And all of you are the children of the most high. You see that? I have said 
you are men. No. I have said, ye are God. And some say, where am I? Lou? He said, forget where you come from. All of you are the children of the Most High. How do you become child of God? And God has no wife. As many that have received him, he gave them power to become the son of God. So all the born again children of God are not natural men. They are God on earth. Somebody said that is Old Testament. Go to John, you'll find it there. John chapter 10 from verse 32. You see down there. You see, unto whom the word of the Lord come to, he called them gods. But you look, look at what he said down there. Look at what he said in 82. Are you still in 82? Read the next two verses. I have said ye are gods. Uh -huh. And all of you are the children of the most high God. Then go to the next one. But you, you see, he come back to men now. But you shall die like men. And fall like one of the princes. Uh huh. Amen. Have you learned something today? You are not men. So when men are saying there is a cast down, that's why God is saying because you are God or not, you will be saying there is a lifting. 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 Others are going down. We are the time. This is a set time for every child of God to go up. Do you know there are people that got better job? You know why they got it? They knew they were not men. That's why they dare to apply. There are people they called for interview. They didn't go. They said there's COVID. Do you know there are people building houses? The people they say, and do you know the funny thing? Most of them are unbelievers, and those are people they say cast down. If they are cast down, is building a house. If they are cast down, is building a bungalow. Then your lifting should be building a skyscraper. If cast down is building a house, then what of your lifting? Life is all about the perspective you hold. <laughs> Honestly, that's why we are here. I am here to renew your mind. Amen. To reveal to you that this is your set time. Amen. This is your hour. Amen. This is your what? Your hour of visitation. Amen. Do you know the difference between us and Daniel? Daniel faced what we are facing. Do you know the situation that happened to Daniel is almost like the one that happened to you? Did government say not go to church? That's how they told Daniel not to pray. But Daniel knew it was his hour. He dared to pray. He dared to pray. Let me, let me, let me remind you of what happened in Daniel chapter 2. When they said the astrologer and the diviner, they could not interpret the, the dream of the king. If you are Daniel, I know you, you will have run away. Because Daniel has not been caught. He has not been arrested. If Isaac is Daniel, he will tell his wife, I have heard that they are arresting people in Nairobi. It is time to go to Nyanza. Because I'm one of the wise men. But Daniel knew when they are arresting people because they cannot they cannot dissolve hard sentence. It is his time. So he went and asked the man, the eunuch, that was arresting people. I said, Why? what is happening? And they told him that you have not heard. The king had a dream. And the dream is this. The king has even forgotten the dream. <laughs> At least you should tell the dream. I tell the interpretation. Both the king doesn't know the dream. Neither the interpretation. That is enough confusion. Because you don't, <laughs> you don't know what you will say. You will say it's none of it. You know what Daniel said? Daniel, before Daniel spoke, he knew this is an opportunity.
to rise. Number one, he went there to find out instead of running away. Do you know how much they are selling it now? In fact, 10 bob. These are the stolen ones. <laughs> it costs them nothing. How will you manufacture this thing for 10 bob? If the people selling on the street are selling 10 bob, that means they get it 10 for 10. <laughs> that means they got it less than 10 shillings. They are clearing the stock because if it's loaded somewhere, the investigation might reach there. <laughs> and it's a man like you who gave it. Honestly, there are certain things that I can't do. It's a man like me who gave it out. Out of compassion, maybe he doesn't even go to church. The people stealing it are Michael, Andrew, Matthew, Jerome, Alphios, John, James. <laughs> oh, <my>. Shit. <laughs> you know why they are doing that? They were not like Daniel. Daniel stepped out. And what happened to Daniel? Daniel was elevated. Let me close here. A time of distress is a time of enlargement. I'll be showing you why tomorrow. So please, as you wake up in your house, don't say, I don't even know where I will turn to tomorrow. No, it is your time. How do you say you don't know what you will do on your bad day? Then it wasn't your bad day. was in your body. This is our season. And what we can only do is to rise. Yes. Say, I am, I am rising. Say it one more time. Believe God between now and December to buy a house. Amen. This is your amen. Need support. Amen. I'm telling you, it can happen. Amen. When it was season of Mordecai, yesterday he was sitting at the gate. The next day he was at the palace. Please go and check the Bible. When it was season of David, yesterday he was with the goat. The next day he was before the king. When it was season of Joseph, yesterday he was in the prison. By evening. When it is your season, it doesn't take time. Let me tell you something. When it is your season, when it is a season of something, you don't go too far before you see it. If you want to eat maize now, you won't walk far. If you want to eat mango, they are available. Banana is crazy everywhere. It is their season. I prophesy over you that lifting shall be evidence in your life. Can I hear your louder amen? amen. Can I hear your louder amen? amen? This is your season. And, and do, you know, do you know where possession begins? Possession begins with ability to know. And then it upgrades itself when you see it. As far as your eyes can see. You can't see what you don't know. This is our season. As you wake up in the morning, don't. Do you know I've not read one newspaper? And I hardly watch network news because there is no news there. Ruto has said what? Uh, Uhuru snub Ruto. Rahila has said uh, he will not attend uh, Ruto bad day. You, you know. So is that what you call news? No. The good news for the children of God is here. Amen. And this one is new every morning. So I brought the news to you. I broke the news to you. This is your season. Why? Men are saying there is a cast down. So, you must be saying there is a lifting. There will be confusion if you are saying what they are saying. Daniel knew it. And you know what the king said about Daniel at the end of the chapter. He said, oh Daniel, every man must worship the king, the God of Daniel. I commend you to God. Amen. This is our season. This is what? Our season. This is our hour. 
This is our season. This is our hour. This is our time. Let's carry that mentality and approach every day, every activity, every negotiation. The other day I was in Malindi. And I think during this COVID or before COVID, shortly before COVID. And the one man said, Pastor, I, I need to, there's a land I've been telling you I will give you. I need to show it to you. And then he told me, I said, do you like it? I said, yes. He said, have it. You know, some of you, we, we are behaving like gold that has been tied for many years. You've come to a level that if it's not difficult, it cannot be for you. When it is a season of mango, you don't throw stone. <laughs> Anything, we, a small wind, we plug down. Come on, as you go, go and enjoy your season in the name of Jesus Christ. It is our season. It is our season. When men are saying there is a cast down, the scripture have confirmed to us that we are not men, we are God. Whatsoever is born of the spirit is a spirit. And whatsoever is born of the flesh is a flesh. Salvation make us God to our generation. And we are not the first one. God said to Moses, see, I have made you God unto Pharaoh. You are all looking alike. You, are, you look like a man, both of you. But one is a God. I say to you, you all look like Kenya. But some of us, we are God. I say we are God. So go and declare the lifting of your desire. I pray once again you will buy house before December 12th. Whatever is your desire. One man called George, he called me and said, I bought motorcycle. I said, good. And you, you are there, all you are wearing is mask. I won't forget my mask. <laughs> huh? I won't forget my mask, you carry it. Where's my sanitizer? Mm -mm. Put them inside the bag once and for all. And face something serious. Yes, face something what? Serious. Lord, what does this season hold for me? That's why I'll be taking you what you do in this season as we gather tomorrow. It is well with your soul. Amen. Have you been blessed? Yes. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor for me. You must not allow the next phase of Corona to catch up with you. And that is spiritual lockdown. Don't go around and walking like a victim. I saw somebody wrote on Facebook and say, uh, during this corona, is when you will know who love you. It's nonsense. Those are language of beggar. Is there anybody that corona is not dealing with? There is no one that is not handling something. If nobody calls you, it's not that they hate you. They are overwhelmed. <laughs> They are overwhelmed. They are just overwhelmed. I was telling my wife, there was somebody I sent money to, and it's like he, he's looking like a whole pastor only. Send me 5,000. He felt I should have sent more. So I, I told mama, I said, you see, he doesn't know that I know other people apart from him. You know, that is the language of ingrate. Somebody give you something. You say, is this all they can give you? You are not the only one on the earth. Other people has to be given. And whatever can be shared can go around. So he never called me. And I told mama, I said, he has helped me. <laughs> he has what? Because even Jesus, when you don't say thanks, he doesn't attend to you. <laughs> even Jesus, as merciful as he is, he said, where are the nine lepers? Since they were not in attendance, he gave his power of wholeness. That was the last money he got from me. And my righteousness is intact. This is your season. I, com I command in the name of Jesus, strange door. Look, God will just give you one opportunity. One. One. And it will look like you traveled when Corona was around just one. And I pray this month of September your restoration and your enlargement shall be a reality. Amen. Rise up on your feet and lift up your hand and appreciate the King of glory. Give him thanks. Give him adoration. Open your mouth 
and declare, I believe what your servant have preached. I am not a victim. Lord, this is my season. This is my hour. This is my day of my visitation. This is my day of visitation. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. I decree doors of favor will be opening to you. I want you to know you are not alone. If you hear war in China, you have a child in China, who to look for a way of sending message there? God is finding out how you are doing on earth now. God is sending a missionary of angels to visit us on earth. Can I hear you louder? Amen. amen. If, if I, any time I, I, anything happens in Kenya, Nigeria, all the people that know us, they begin to call. I hope it doesn't affect you. If men that are limited can do that, how much more our father? He will be sending you angels amen. who will come and check your body while you are sleeping and say, no, I can't allow him to have any disease now because there are too many corona people in the hospital. So they fix you and treat you. When you wake up, that's why you are okay. I said humorously, many of you, COVID came to you if it exists. It came. But you know what happened? He could not enter. And some of you, when he came, the way you were swallowing Ugali, <laughs> he knows if he's near you, you will swallow him. He said, this one can't do ever lick sickly. He went out. I swear, if there is COVID, he came to many people. Okay, you see, not now they are testing that some people have what? Asthma or something. Asthma, asthmatic. And that one. <laughs> Pray, asymptomatic. Praise God. Many of you were, 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 were you used Ugali to swindle it. <laughs> because the weapon was fashioned to the whole world. But God never allowed it to prosper in your life. Amen. Please get back to your God. Hold on to Him. I won't let you go in this season Amen. until you bless me. May the Lord bless every one of you. Amen. May tomorrow's service be powerful. Amen. May the angel of the Lord begin to visit you. Amen. Now that your heart has been configured, may divine manifestation begin to take place in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe we have been blessed. Have you been blessed? Put your hands together and declare with a loud voice, it is my season. Shout it louder, it is my season. Please take your seat. Please take your seat. Thank you, faithful Father. It is our season. Hallelujah. It is my season. Amen. What a, what a way to begin the first day. We have to understand our season. If we don't want to be a byword and a proverb, if we don't want to be mocked, we have to understand our season. It is time to worship the Lord with our substance. I believe you came here with a substance in your hand so that you can honor the Lord. There are details being displayed right now on the screen for those that are watching online. And for those of us that are here, I'm sure we still remember our pay bill in case you're giving your offering via M-Pesa, 140019. Giving is living. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just like we desire to keep on giving out so that we get refreshed daily, that is how it is also spiritually. If we want to experience a financial refreshing lifestyle, we must constantly give. I believe you have your offering, and in case there's anyone here paying their tithe as well, I'll combine the two as we pray. Father, we thank you this hour. We thank you for your word that we have received tonight. Thank you for the understanding that we have received. We know that this is our season. Lord, receive these offerings from our hands. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom. 
And to anyone paying their tithes tonight, Lord, if there be any area of their lives that issues have been tight, as you receive their tithe, Lord, losing it up for them in the name of Jesus. Confirm your word that says you open the windows of heaven and pour blessings that there will be no room to contain. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. As we cast our offering, we'll be singing this song. This is my season. This is my time. It's given me victory. It's the sovereign one. sure we are all glad the way God has started with us this fight day one if day one is like this I don't know day two would be like how so I thank you very much for that timely word May the Lord and grace you more praise the name of the Lord please listen to the following announcement good news the seminar continue tomorrow and shall be our Thanksgiving service time is 8:30 a.m. That is East African time. Visit our, for the people that are here, you visit our bookshop for our, our, our whole variety of spiritual books and material that will build you spiritually. Praise the name of the Lord. So remember to invite somebody tomorrow and don't forget your dancing shoe. Don't forget your offering. The Lord has done you well, Abby. If God has done you well, then it shall be glorious. Let's put our hands together to the Lord as welcome. 
senior pastor to come and close. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So tomorrow, 8 30 in the morning. Make sure you are here. If you come nine, we are gone. Amen. Amen. You know, in my hair days, today you will have been closing by 6 30. If you come late, you will face what they faced in Mombasa last Sunday. Praise the Lord. We are in a new jet. Amen. New age. The leader takes the lead. Praise God. I said, praise God. So get ready tomorrow. Go and reflect on what you have heard today. Those are the word of God. Amen. Those are the word of God. That when you see the globe saying there is a cast down, you will be saying there is a lifting. Praise God. Nothing can be truer than the truth. Praise the Lord. Carry that mentality. This is not my time to go down. This is my time to go up. And at the end of the day, you will surely go up. That's why we have come here, my wife, today to celebrate with you in these two days. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow, I told your pastor, if you dress like a hunter, we send you back home. Amen. Because I'm here with my crew and you'll be watched tomorrow everywhere. So I don't want them to say, do we have one time in Nairobi Church? <laughs> so put on your best and, then, and put on a smile. Don't sit down as if you are recruited for school of demons. <laughs> Amen. You are the seed that the Lord has blessed. You are not the seed Corona have blessed. You are the seed that the Lord has blessed. Praise the Lord. So come on time, 8.30. You know, tomorrow when we say 8.30, it's going to be 8.30 because uh, that is the mainstream now. That's our live stream. That's where they watch in Jamaica, in wherever. So they are waiting. Praise the Lord. So we, our first service in Mombasa is for us. Our second service is for the world. Praise the Lord. I, I, was, I was commending someone. Most of you must have seen the fellow in glo Money Glory. You are in Kenya here and you are not making up to Money Glory. Please repent and go for water baptism on your own. Amen. Go for, you are in Kenya here, you are not making it. Jamini, your journey is long, cut it short. Nigeria joined. You know what it means? That means they are awake by what time? By 3 a.m. When you see Pastor Daniel online, all those who join Nigeria, that means 3 a.m. in Nigeria. When they finish, they go to sleep. U.S., the same. Australia, the same. They tell me my message, verbatim. Please repent. I look forward to catch you in money glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many of you have been following up on the subject of relationship? Is he helping you in relating with your colleagues, your parents? Please Let's go. It is our season. It is our season. Praise the Lord. Let's rise up and share the goodness once again. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord God is our Son and our shield. He will give us grace and glory. No good thing will we hold from us as we walk uprightly. We are restored to power, to dominion to honor and to dignity. Amen. Please don't forget to share. share. Share the message, share the flyer and make sure you call one or two people and tell them I didn't see you today. I guess you are working but I'm looking forward to be with you tomorrow. God bless you. It is well with you. Well, wave to someone. The government says you should not shake them. So just wave to them and say, nice to see you. I can't wait. I'm in a hurry. It is your time of lifting. Amen. Amen. And tell him, good to see you in your new attires. I have to think twice to know whether you are the one.